Hello Begbrook, welcome back to another computing lesson. Today we're going to be creating a rock band using a program called Scratch. Now Scratch teaches us all about programming. We're not going to look at all of the aspects of programming today, but we're going to focus on changing the sounds and the costumes within our animation. When you are ready, let's start programming. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is to type in scratch and search it. The first one, scratch, imagine, program and share, is the one that you're going to need to click on. Okay, if you then click on create at the top, that will take you to the page that we need to use today. This little green box comes up. We're not going to be using that one though, so we can close that and get rid of it. Okay, the first thing that we are going to need to do is change our sprite. A sprite is just a name for a character on Scratch. The little cat is our sprite. I don't think we're going to need a cat in a rock band. So what you need to do is you need to scroll down so that you can see where it says Sprite 1 down here. And there's a little dustbin with a cross on it. You just need to click that to get rid of the sprite. Now, we don't have a character, so we're going to need to choose one from the library. Down here, it says choose a sprite if you hover over it. You can choose a sprite, paint a sprite, surprise a sprite or upload a sprite. We are going to need to click on choose a sprite. When that's loaded, you will see all of the different sprites that we could have. Because we are making a rock band, we are going to need a drum. So I'm going to type in drum. It's up to you which drum you would like to choose. I am going to choose this one as my sprite. And as you can see, it has come up now instead of the cat. It's called something sensible drum so I don't need to change the name of it. Okay this white bit is our background. I don't think a rock band would happen on a white background so where it says at the bottom here stage it then says choose a backdrop. That just means a background for our stage. So again, we've got choose a backdrop, paint a backdrop, surprise backdrop, or upload a backdrop. We're going to need to choose a backdrop. And again, you get all of these suggestions that you could have. We're going to click indoors today because a rock concert is going to be happening indoors. And I'm going to choose the theater one to make it look like a stage. I've noticed that my drum looks like it's hovering so I'm just going to click on it and move it down put it on the stage so that it's not floating in the air. Okay it's a rock concert so we're going to need there to be some music. Down here at the bottom it says add extension that's what you need to click on. When you have clicked on that, you get lots of different options, but we want to play instruments and drums, so we are going to click on the music one. As you can see, music has been added on to our list of options. To be able to play music though, we need a trigger. A trigger tells the algorithm which is what we're making, an algorithm is a list of instructions. The trigger tells the algorithm when to play. So you need to click on events. And these ones that have got a little curve above them are all triggers. Let's look at what we've got. When the green flag is clicked, the green flag is up here. So when you click that, the algorithm will start. 
when the space key is pressed. When the space bar on your keyboard is pressed, the algorithm will start. When this sprite is clicked, so that means when the drum is clicked, it will start. I'm going to have when the green flag is clicked. I'm just going to show you how I got it over there. I clicked on it and I dragged it into this area. This area is where all of the code for the drum is going to be recorded. As you can see, there's a picture of the drum at the top. So I know that this is the drums algorithm. I'm now going to go on to the music because when the green flag is clicked, I want the drum to play music, but the drum won't play music unless I have programmed it to do so. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to drag it over, play drum, the snare drum for 0 0.25 beats. OK, let's see whether it works. Oh, I can hear that when I click the green flag, my drum makes a beat. What you can do is you can click on the drop down and there are lots of different sounds that your drum could make. I'm going to try the bass drum one to see if I like that one more. Let's test it by clicking the green arrow. I'm not sure on that one. I think I'm going to go for the crash symbol. I really like that sound, but because I've got a drum, I'm not sure it fits. So I'm going to go back to the snare drum. You can have whatever sound that you like. So I've got one instrument in my band, but I really would like a singer. So that would be another sprite, another character. I'm not going to delete the drum, though, because I still want the drum. I'm going to go back to choose a sprite. And I'm going to type in singer. I'm going to move her so that she's over here and not stood on top of the drum. OK. I have now got a new background over here because I haven't programmed the singer to do anything. If I click back on the drum, I can see this is the drums programming. But because I'm going to program the singer, I'm going to click on her so that I can put my program in this bit here. At the moment, though, it doesn't look like she is actually singing and I want to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I am going to right click on her and I'm going to click on duplicate. I've now got two. singers which isn't what I wanted because I just wanted to change her costume so I'm going to now delete her. Remember it's okay to delete things and to change them when you're programming because when you're programming you need to debug that means you're always looking for any problems to make sure that your program moves perfectly. So Instead of that, I'm going to change her costume. So at the moment, I'm looking at code. And as you can see, it says costumes and sounds. I'm going to click on costumes. And now this is where I'm going to duplicate her. So if I right click on her and duplicate her, now she has got two costumes. But at the moment, both costumes are exactly the same. The first one, where it says Singer 1, I'm going to rename to Not Singing. And then Singer 2, I'm going to rename it as Singing, so that it's really clear when I'm programming which one I would like to select. On the Singing one, I am going to use the lines, and I'm going to draw some lines to show her singing. So I'm going to click on the screen and then drag it out so that you can see this is like her voice 
coming out as she is singing. Now you can see that costume one is her not singing. It doesn't have any singing lines on. And costume two is of her singing. I can see that her voice is being projected. I'm now going to click back onto code. Now, she's got two costumes, so I can switch her costume so that it looks like she starts not singing and then she begins to sing. So I'm going to go back into events because remember, I need a trigger to tell that sprite, that character, what to do. So this time, I'm going to use when the green flag is clicked again because I don't mind if the drum starts beating and she starts singing at the same time. That is okay with me. You might want to have the drum play first and then do something else that makes her start singing. It is up to you. Okay, now I've got my trigger. I need to make her change her costume because at the moment she's already started singing. But at the start of the performance, I don't want her to be singing. So I need to click on look. And I'm going to drag over the block that says switch costume to singing. Well, that's not right because when I click on the green flag, it looks like she's singing straight away, which isn't what I want. I want it to be the not singing costume. Let's try that. That's better. When the drum beats, she is not singing, which is perfect. That is exactly what I want. Now, I want there to be a little bit of music in my animation, so I'm going to click on sound down the side. I'm going to use um, play the sound pop until done. Remember, you can change the sound, so I've chosen it to be pop, but you could record something yourself for it to be the music in the background. So, now that I have played that sound, I'm not sure that my code is right. When this is clicked, she's not singing and the sound isn't playing. I've realised my mistake. Listen carefully. The popping is just a pop. That's not something that she can sing to. And I've decided now to change my mind. When that's clicked, I want her to sing straight away. So I'm going to put that back to singing. Remember, it's okay to change your mind when your animation comes together. That's called debugging. I'm now going to click on sounds because listen to the pop sound again. It's not great. So I'm going to go back down to choose a sound and to search one of the sounds. I'm going to scroll down and have a little look at something that she that shows that she could be singing. There are lots and lots, so I wonder if there is a singing one. I'm going to type in singing to see if that brings up anything. It doesn't. I'm now going to type in voice to see whether that gives something. Oh, singer one and singer two. Let's try these. Perfect, that is exactly what I want. So I am going to delete the pop sound because that's not at all helpful. I'm going to go back to my code and it still says play sound pop. Well, this time I want it to play the sound singer until done. And then I want her to stop singing. So I need to go back to looks and to switch costume to not singing. So over here is my algorithm for my drum. Over here is my algorithm for my singer. Let's press the green flag to see if there are 
any bugs in my performance. I'm really happy with that. She changed costume at the right time. The drum was at the start. I'm quite happy with my animation. Now, you can go back. You might want her to talk. You might want her to think. You might want to add more instruments, which remember you can go down to choose a sprite and add some more instruments and then follow the same steps so the instruments play. Have a go and see what you can create.